As we've been reporting, Joe Biden has issued a response after four women accused him of inappropriate behavior. Two detailed their experiences to the New York Times. DJ Hill is one of those women. She is a writer who met Biden at a 2012 fundraising event. She joins us now from Aspen, Colorado. Welcome, DJ. It's great to have you with us. If, Thank you, Tanya. It's good to be here. If you would, can you describe for us your interaction with Joe Biden at that fundraising event about six years ago? So it was a meet and greet with him. It wasn't going to be any length of time we would be spending with him. We waited in line, and when it was our turn to go up and uh, meet Vice, Vice President Biden, um, I approached him first to introduce myself, my husband Bob, uh, came up behind me and did the same, and we made some small talk, waiting for the photographer to get ready to take our picture. And as we stood um, waiting and kind of chatting, uh, Vice President Biden put his arms around both of our shoulders, and you know it seemed like a, a comfortable experience. And uh, as the photographer was t taking the shot or getting ready to take the shot. Uh, I felt, and my husband noticed, that Mr. Biden's um, hand that had been on my shoulder slowly disappeared and did a low uh, or a slow um, uh, descent down my back um, until he reached my waist. And, and how did that make you feel? Can you describe what you thought in that moment? In all honesty, I was shocked. That wasn't something I had anticipated um, that the Vice President um, of the United States would do. We have been to events similar as this, and uh, candidates have always acted, or you know, uh, governors or whoever have always acted, um, what I felt that made me comfortable. And in this instance, um, I, I, I was in shock. I, I just kind of froze, and my husband Bob had seen his hand go down and um, ended up making making a joke um, because he could just see my face freeze. He knows me quite well, and he knew that um, what was happening was making me feel very uncomfortable. And um, so I was very happy when the experience was over, and um, it's actually hard to recall today. And clearly, you know, your husband noted your discomfort. Did the two of you discuss it at the time? And why is it important for you to talk about this now? I really feel that um, it's been inspiring for me, whether it's um, uh, Miss uh, Flores or uh, Dr. Ford or Miss Caruso. Um, to hear their stories and their bravery in talking about similar experiences, and it's one of those things when I was listening to the news report with Ms. Flores and she started to share her experience and it was like my insides just knotted up and I thought, someone else does know that, someone else does understand that. And I felt very strongly that we have had this cancer on both our politics and our country for so long. And this behavior, this culture needs to change, and it needs to change now. And DJ, I spoke to Ms. Flores about her experience, and uh, you know, while it was very upsetting for her, and she called it incredibly inappropriate, um, she said it didn't appear to be sexual to her. Um, did you have that same sense with this behavior from Joe Biden towards you? Did it feel sexual? I can't say that, that that's the case. I, I would call it in, extremely uncomfortable, mm -hmm. um, especially, uh, and I think this is a fairly common thing, people that are in positions of power, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the person that's on the receiving end doesn't feel like they have a choice. They don't feel like, you know, we've got the Secret Service uh, standing right there, and we've got the photographer, and we have other people standing in line, and. Honestly, I didn't feel like there was a choice in that moment, and um, I just, I just think that people have to start standing up. 
we all have to stand up together, whether we're um, young women, we're, we're young men, we're my age, whatever we are, we need to band together and say, right now, you know, the Me Too movement has happened. We all know now that we agree that this behavior is not acceptable and we have to stand up and it has to end now. It has to be a zero tolerance, in my opinion, going and, forward. And DJ, have you seen Joe Biden's apology video where he promises to change his behavior going forward? I actually did see that today. And what did you think of it? Do you think he went far enough? It's hard for me because, you know, he really talked about um, that he's a gregarious man, that this is just part of his nature. He's a huggy, you know, touchy-feely kind of guy. And I have known people like that. I felt that um, uh, President Obama was a very charismatic man, very kind, very caring. But he knew where to draw the line and I, he always was very respectful to people and I think that hasn't been something he's had to deal with and so um, as much as I appreciate uh, Mr. Biden acknowledging this I think that's a first step and I think that we have a long way to go whether or not he decides that he truly wants to change this behavior he says I get it I get it I I am hopeful, um, but it remains to be seen. And right. I think we all need to be watching and we all need to have an expectation for how that should go. And DJ, as you know, he has a lot of uh, defenders who say, you know, his style is just one of exuberant affection that can get a little physical at times, but no harm right. or, or sexual nuance is intended. And in fact, no woman has to date come forward accusing him of, of sexual assault. Um, so I'm just curious if you think that his past behavior should be disqualifying, as Ms. Flores does. I guess I would say I don't feel I'm the one to make that call. Um, I, I think he needs to, you know, search his own soul as to his motivations. I don't know what that is. I know how I felt mm -hmm. in this experience. Whether or not he decides to run or people encourage him to run, there are people who know Mr. Biden much better than I do and people who have perhaps given him advice about um, his politics and have advised him. I heard several commentators today basically um, or experts say, no, they're just if you're running for office, we're not grabbing people. We're not kissing them. We're not, you know, hugging them. It, it, just no. And it, it has to be important how the person that is experiencing those things feels. And I, I guess I, I don't feel qualified to say whether or not he should be running. So would you support him if he does run for the Democratic nomination? Again, I, after hearing his, it wasn't actually an apology, right. if you listen closely, um, but he kept saying he gets it, he gets it. And I, I'm going to be watching. I mean, right. I'm I'm very much interested in it. It for me, it's words, but it's also actions. So, so are you he, are you a Democrat? And if so, is there someone in the Democratic field that you would support right now? I am an independent, actually, okay. and so I I am looking at all candidates that are out there. I'm weighing, you know. Um, their views on policy. I'm weighing um, uh, all the things that you are supposed to be looking at with a candidate. I mean, I just think these these uh, behaviors that we've seen for you know decades are very distracting from the issues that we really need to be focusing on in 2019.